Hey guys, this is Nick, and today I'm gonna talk about which distributions are, in my opinion, better suited for Windows users trying to move to Linux. Now, we all know that moving to Linux and choosing your first distro can be pretty tricky, so I wanted to outline a few that I think bring a specific value to a Windows user. No, they are not sorted in any order of preference or any tier, so they're just here to fulfill various needs. Speaking of needs, what you probably need is your own Linux server. And fortunately, you can, thanks to today's sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider, meaning they provide hosting that you can use to run your own servers, whatever you need one for. I use Linode to host my own Nextcloud instance, but thanks to their one-click apps, you can deploy any type of server in, well, in one click. If you're a gamer, you can easily start your own Valheim, Minecraft or CSGO server. But if you're looking for a VPN, you can also one-click deploy your own, using WireGuard or OpenVPN, and you can ensure there is no middleman trying to intercept what you're connecting to. Linode is affordable and has consistent pricing, with data centers all over the globe. You can upgrade your servers in one click, just as I did on my Nextcloud instance to add more storage, and you have real humans behind it all to talk to, 24-7, by phone or support ticket. Even if you use the cheapest plan available, which is $5 a month, by the way. They also have very detailed documentation if you don't like talking to other human beings, which I know I'm not a fan of. If you use the link in the description to sign up, you get a $100 credit to use on your own servers, so head over there and give it a go. I am certain you won't regret it. Now let's begin with the complete clone. Now here you are, you suffered one blue screen of death to many, your computer rebooted without asking permission, took one hour to apply updates, basically you're fed up with Microsoft and Windows. But on the other hand, you don't want to relearn another interface, and you think that the default layout and interface of Windows is perfectly fine. Well in that case, the option for you is Windows FX. This distribution is based on Ubuntu LTS, virtually the most popular and used Linux version in the world but you would be hard-pressed to differentiate it at first glance from actual Windows 10. Everything here is made to be ultra-familiar to Windows users, from the desktop layout, to the start menu, to the applications. They even made sure to reuse Windows wallpapers and logos to bring Windows users something they can use with their eyes closed. I'm sure Microsoft's lawyers won't object to that. Now, it's not just a theme here. There are a lot of things integrated out of the box to make Windows users comfortable. It's pre-installed with Microsoft Edge as a default browser, and the settings application has been completely tweaked to look like Windows 10 settings. Windows FX uses the KDE Plasma desktop environment as a base, and some settings will reflect that, opening a dedicated window instead of being displayed in the settings app, but that's still pretty impressive. You even have a way to sync with OneDrive right from the start. Now the copy is so perfect that you can even elect to buy a $25 license key to keep access to this OneDrive integration and other various features after the fact. You also have only Office pre-installed, as well as shortcuts to Office Online. Basically, the goal here is to have as close a replica of Windows 10 as possible. It also offers the ability to install Wine in one click, which gives you a compatibility layer to run Windows programs on Linux just by downloading .exe files and running them as you would expect on Windows. Now, it's also a pretty bloated distribution. It ships with Chrome, Edge and Firefox, GIMP, Audacity, OBS, Spotify, VS Code and many, many other programs, including various duplicates and Deconf Editor for users who are nostalgic about the Windows registry. I mean, if the goal is to copy Windows, bloatware and registry editing is part of the design sheet, right? Windows FX is probably going to get sued into oblivion in the future if Microsoft realizes it exists, so I'm not sure I'd really recommend it to anyone, and I would be wary to pay for a distribution that might just cease to exist like that, but I had to include it here, it's just so close to Windows 10. Now, if your reason to move away from Windows has nothing to do with how it looks and feels, and more with how it's treating you, how it's monitoring you, then this might be a good first step. I mean. Like I said, I wouldn't completely recommend it because I'm not so sure if it's a shady thing or not, but it's the closest thing to a clone of Windows 10 that you can get without using actual Windows. Now, moving out of the morally grey territory, these distributions that I'm gonna recommend now are more for people who aren't afraid of learning new things, but still want to keep their familiarity with the Windows layout and the Windows defaults. So basically, what you'll find here is menu bars, title bars, a bottom bar, a start menu, 
those working conventions that you get used to on Windows and that you don't really want to give up on. So the first option I'd recommend is KDE Neon, using the KDE Plasma desktop environment. It's actually close to the Windows layout by default, with a bottom bar that serves as your main way to interact with the applications and the system, and a nice start menu equivalent with search capabilities, access to your files, applications, and system controls. The other advantage is that KDE Plasma is really very configurable. If a default behavior doesn't suit you, you will be able to change it after spending a little time digging in the settings. That's probably what will be the biggest obstacle, learning where to find each setting that you want to change. Now Plasma has made strides in that department, but I know I still need to use the search feature baked into the settings. Then again, my memory hasn't been what it used to be since that traumatic incident. KDE Neon isn't the only distribution using KDE Plasma, but it's the flagship one, made by the KDE developers with a very stable base, Ubuntu LTS once again, and the Plasma desktop itself that will be updated as soon as new releases are out. Neon has its own app store called Discover, which is nice enough to let you install any other software you might want, as the pre-install selection is pretty slim. It also comes with KDE Connect, an equivalent to the My Phone app on Windows, which will let you integrate any Android phone with your desktop super easily and have shared notifications, control your PC's playback from the phone, or even answer messages directly from your computer. The second option I'd recommend is Linux Mint, using the Cinnamon desktop. Linux Mint also has a default layout very similar to Windows, using a bottom bar and a start menu. It's also very configurable, so you'll be able to change whatever you want if you don't like how it works. It's also based on Ubuntu LTS, so it's very stable. So what's the difference with KDE Neon? Well, the Cinnamon desktop is a bit easier to get to grips than KDE Plasma. The settings might not be as abundant, but they're easier to find, remember, and generally the desktop doesn't feel as intimidating out of the box. Now, don't worry about the green color, you can change it after the first start, because why would you keep it? Linux Mint has various applications pre-installed, including LibreOffice, and it has a good app store to install anything else you might need. Now, it's not updated as often as KDE Neon, waiting for major versions to release bigger feature updates, but it's a really stable and user-friendly version. Now, one might argue that Linux Mint is actually more user-friendly out of the box than Windows is. Now, of course, you can find plenty of other distributions using the KDE Plasma desktop or the Cinnamon desktop, but the ones I recommended have the advantage of being based on Ubuntu LTS, which means that they're going to be very stable, and as we're going to see in the next chapter, they are also your best bet for finding help online. Now, let's move on to a distro that actually has the most online help available. So, basically, this recommendation is going to be more for people who are kind of experienced, aren't afraid of change, and aren't afraid of using their favorite search engine to find answers to their problems and to try and fix and solve it by themselves. Basically, they don't want something that exactly looks like Windows, they're ready to learn something else, and they're willing to look online to find some help to fix the issues and maybe tailor their experience to what they really want to use. In that case, Ubuntu is your best bet, or any of its derivatives. Ubuntu is one of, if not the most used distro out there, and it serves as the base for a lot more distributions, including all the ones I mentioned up to this point. It comes in a lot of variants, so you can pick any desktop layout you want, and it's something that you won't have any trouble finding online help for, if you ask nicely. Now, some people here will argue that Arch Linux has a more detailed wiki, and that's true, but Arch has two fatal flaws for beginners, in my opinion. First, the wiki asks you to have prerequisite knowledge of a lot of concept, or, barring that, that you're willing to dig deep down into the various pages of the wiki to learn exactly how things work. And second, only a mother could love its default install process. Now, actually, Archer's mother called, and she actually also thinks that its install process is super unintuitive, so there's that. So if you want the most help available and a simple way to get the system onto your device, then it's gotta be Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Xubuntu, any Ubuntu will do. You'll get forum posts, blog articles, virtually all tutorials will have a section for Ubuntu. You just can't get lost here, and it's going to be really tough to not find a solution to your problems if you encounter any. Now, the look and feel will be a matter of what you're comfortable with. The default on Ubuntu is GNOME, which is very different from Windows and will ask you to relearn a lot of things, but it's also a really simple interface once you've gotten the hang of it. 
Or you could also use any other desktop I mentioned before, KD Plasma or Cinnamon, and a lot more, including XFCE, if your computer is a potato or if you want to hold your precious RAM for something else than displaying a few panels. I started a video series on that, check it out in the corner up top. Now it's also interesting to note that KD Neon and Linux Mint will both be able to apply any online tutorial that you can find about Ubuntu to themselves, because they use the same base. And finally, the last pick for people who like to do it the hard way. Now, if you don't care, if you've completed the whole Dark Souls series using a banana as a controller and with your eyes closed, if you like to learn by trial and error and have some time to sink in and you just want the hardest way possible to get out of Windows, then Arch is your solution. Now, honestly, it's not that tricky to install. It's just a matter of following the wiki, but it's going to teach you a lot about Linux along the way, how it works, what components it uses, and it will let you pick how it looks and how it will work. Now, it's definitely not something I would recommend to a newcomer, unless you're planning your move to Linux as a side project that you're willing to sink time into, learning the ins and outs, and taking whatever time you need. Now, if you are technically inclined and you have the time, an Arch install can actually be a very fun project to do. It's going to teach you a lot about Linux, and the Arch Wiki will be a great resource for you to learn how to use your system, what components do, what to install in what order. It's going to be cool. But if you just want a plug-and-play solution to finally leave Windows, though, Arch is just not something I can recommend. And that covers our tour of the various Linux distros that I think are best suited when you're trying to move from Windows to Linux for the first time. Now, that doesn't mean that other choices are bad or unsuitable or terrible. It just means that these are the ones I think are the best. Every single distro is beautiful in its own way, except maybe this one. But yeah, those are the ones that I picked because those are the ones that will either get an exact copy of Windows or a very similar layout and look and feel out of the box or the most online help. Or Arch if you really want to uh, cry blood for your first transition to Linux. Now feel free to disagree or agree in the comments. And in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. And if you'd like to watch somewhere else than on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey. I'll left a link in the description below. Now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!